se está haciendo amenaza. Esta resolución amenaza o no amenaza, perturba o no perturba el derecho de este pueblo que vive hace centurias de centurias en las localidades que hoy día se pretende construir la central de biblioteca. He tenido la oportunidad, su señoría ilustrísima, de estar ahí junto a los mapuches en las comunidades de que nunca Ralto y Ralto le voy día pasado. La desesperanza es tremenda. Se ha presentado por Indesa, pero por la cima de pero instigado por Indesa. El Pirno Pehuen, que se llama el nombre del Pehuen, por causa de nosotros somos Pehuenche, el nombre, por causa de nosotros tenemos hasta el nombre del Pehuenche, porque así muy robativo cuando vimos Pehuen de Araucaria, para siempre lo vamos a cuidar porque es el espíritu de nosotros, el de los raíces, y no vamos a perder nunca. This woman lives in a country just emerging from 20 years of death squads and dictatorship. You still don't draw attention to yourself in Chile, but Nicolasa Kintraman is, and the future of Indian land rights will rest upon her resolve. El río, el bio, bio que está corriendo, mire cómo está corriendo, están libres por aquí y por allá lo están atajando. Ese no es justo. No debía tenerlo así. El pechachao no dejó de estar atajado el río. El río que esté corriente, igual como él corre el aire, el aire nadie se ataja. Igual como el río... Nicolás' tribe, the Puenche, a part of Chile's indigenous Mapuche people. She's lodged a native title claim to prevent her land being flooded by a hydro scheme. And to the government's horror, it appears that at law she might succeed. If she does, she'll not only save her land, but she'll set a precedent that will protect all indigenous land in Chile. Of course, we need to protect the Pehuenches, but, but we need to, to, to develop. As a country, uh, we cannot take a decision to to preserve it, I mean, to put it in the freezer and leave it as it is. I mean, the level of poverty we have in Chile is, 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 is uh, so big that we need to develop. <laughs> Nicolasa lives with her sister Berta along the banks of the Bio Bio, and they've become the spanner in the works for the ambitions of Chile's largest private corporation, the Indesa Power Company. They were the first Puenche family to openly declare that they will never give up their land to Indesa, and ultimately, they may be the last. But they know, and the government knows, and Indesa knows, that it will take just one successful land claim to stop the dam. Siempre ha sido estos caballeros vienen de harto, harto lejos. Quitarle la tierra a la gente pehuenche mapuche, porque ellos les dicen que gente mapuche no sabe. ¿Mm? ¿Cómo no va a saber? Por causa de eso, esta gente ahora lo están pasando igual. Nicolasa and Berta's home is probably the most important piece of land in Chile today. The battle to possess it will not only be a defining moment for indigenous land rights, it will test the independence of the legal system itself, 
a system still staggering to its feet after years of dictatorship. Con la venia, señor presidente, alego en representación de la empresa nacional de electricidad Endesa y por las razones de hecho y de derecho que expondré, solicito que se Roberto Salandon, representing the sisters and the Poenche, was a victim and prisoner of the previous fascist regime. Pablo Rodriguez for Endesa was one of its founders. Together, these lawyers represent not just two sides of a land rights case, but two sides of Chile's past that have yet to be resolved. To many, the outcome of this case will decide whether Chile continues to move towards democracy or bows to the economic power of those who previously ruled here. The preliminary hearings have begun in trials that are likely to continue for the next six months. Estas tierras, de acuerdo al artículo 13 de la ley indígena, la ley 19.253, están sometidas a un régimen de protección conforme al cual no podrán ser enajenadas, embargadas, grabadas, ni adquiridas por prescripción. When civilian government returned to Chile in 1990, a slate of new laws were passed, including an indigenous law which recognized in a general sense the Mapuche's prior ownership of land. Most Chileans assumed the indigenous law was a gesture of goodwill, but to the Mapuche, its terms were unambiguous. No one could take their land anymore, not the government, and least of all, a private power company. Well, why have this legislation? Why have this land rights, native land rights legislation, if you can override it so easily? I mean, is, well, it, is, is, is it a case simply of saying you can have your land unless we want it for something no. else? I mean, this is a general principle, not only in Chile. I mean, that's the principle of uh, um, the common good. I'm, I'm sure it will be good for Chile, but I, I, I doubt that it will be good for the Provincia, particularly uh, as a precedent for, for, for removing the Puche lands. Uh, well, <laughs> we clearly disagree there. I mean, if they, they are not well off today. I mean, if, have, have you seen how, how they live today? I mean, they are not well off today. Si se construye o no se construye la central hidroeléctrica es un test de la mayor importancia, es un test de credibilidad en el caso concreto este para los indígenas de si se puede volver o no a creer en los chilenos que también han sido herederos del poder colonial español, digamos en lo que a ellos se refiere. The Bio Bio River is a place of enormous significance to all Mapuche. The southern invasion of the Spanish conquistadors ended here on its banks. In a victory rare in South America, the Mapuche drove the Spanish north back towards Santiago and the Bio Bio has been Indian land ever since, a virtual border between European and indigenous Chile. Today, the Puenche community here are deeply divided over whether to fight for the river once more. One hundred families will be directly affected by the dam. While eight families have signed agreements with Indesa, even fewer have lodged native title claims. A whole generation here have learned that it's dangerous to say no to the government or to the companies the government supports. And there's a fear that those seen to resist will not only lose their land, but any chance for compensation as well. He perdido ese amigo. He perdido mis parientes, he perdido mi sobrino, he perdido mi sobrina, mi cuñado, mi, mis primas hermanas. He perdido todo eso por estar yo en contra de Endesa. Juan Pablo lives downstream from the sisters and he's one of the few Puenche who's prepared to openly join in their legal action. Déjate, oye. 
Deja de ver. Nada, es que de repente él le dijo, vamos a cambiarlo y, y obligándolo de que si no se iban, lo sacaban con la fuerza pública. Tiene miedo la gente, porque esa misma gente que está atemorizada por Endesa, le tiene miedo al gobierno de que si el gobierno se enoja o, o, o manda a la fuerza pública, a los militares, a su tal, o, o hacer lo que el gobierno quiera. Entonces eso es el, el lo que acá muchas personas tienen miedo de luchar, de, de, de discutir con Endesa, porque le tienen miedo al gobierno. It's a fear created not just by a long history of persecution, but even more by the events of modern Chilean politics. Democracy is returning to this country, but the shadow of Pinochet still hangs over it. It was here at the presidential palace that he launched one of the longest and bloodiest coups in South America. Pinochet began his reign of terror in 1973 when the Allende government threatened the interests of landholders and miners. His fascist alliance with big business lasted almost 20 years. For each of those years, to oppose the military or the large companies that supported it meant imprisonment, horrific torture or death. Today, Pinochet is not in jail, he's still having medals pinned on his chest. He and the military have made it clear that the elections that returned Liberal government occurred at his pleasure. He still hands select senators and his cronies still hold all their positions of power and privilege. No one has been punished for the atrocities that occurred. These people have gathered to celebrate the 24th anniversary of Pinochet's ascension to power. They didn't lose family and friends during the regime, they made money and lots of it. Se logra terminar con, con el gobierno de Pinochet, más no con el poder de Pinochet. La democracia, el advenimiento de la democracia o de la transición a la democracia en Chile, eh, no ha significado la desaparición del poder político y económico y militar de los que sostuvieron la dictadura militar. De hecho, Pinochet sigue siendo el comandante en jefe del ejército chileno. El poder económico sigue estando en manos de lo que, siempre, o de lo, que lo obtuvieron durante el régimen militar. These are the powers that the Pahuenche are confronting. Their land claim doesn't just threaten Endesa's hydro scheme. If the Pahuenche succeed, the legal precedent of land rights would apply across the country, threatening the elite's copper mines, their timber concessions, their water rights, their power companies. And no one in this country can forget what happened the last time the assets of the Chilean elite were threatened. It's more than just the symbols of the recent past that echo through Chile today. All decisions are made in its shadow. Everyone in this justice system knows that yesterday's criminals still hold power, in politics, in business, in the law itself. The regime forged the views of each person involved in this trial. The judges just survived the regime or thrived under it. 
according to their personal choices in a system where independence was dangerous and justice belittled. Roberto Salandon was imprisoned by it, thrown in jail for two years by a kangaroo court and then exiled for eight. He survived, but many of his friends weren't so lucky. His opponent, Pablo Rodriguez, bloomed under Pinochet. He was the leader of Fatherland and Freedom, a fascist group that unleashed a wave of terror and was a recruiting ground for the state's murderous secret police. That his views on legal procedure are listened to at all says as much about the country as it does about the company that employs him. Clearly, his connections are still impeccable. We are very confident in the, in the Chilean uh, courts uh, because uh, we think that uh, if, if the situation go to the, to the Chilean court, they decide in, 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 in the right course. Why, why do you think that? Why do you think they'll decide, decide for you? I, for, me, for me, it's not uh, possible to, to refer to this today because I think that for me it's, uh, it's, it's future. But you are spending uh, a lot of money. You are proceeding as if uh, the dam has approval. You're yes. building roads, you're building yes. road camps. Yes. How can you make those sorts of decisions without knowing what the end result will be? We are very optimistic. While the Puente's legal actions are still being heard, work has already begun on the Bio Bio. Forests are being cleared, roads built, power lines installed. The message to the Puente is clear. The project has begun and nothing can stop it. It's the kind of message they've heard all their lives. To Roberto, the Puente are no longer powerless. The coming months will see whether his belief that a new era may be dawning in Chile is anything more than a leap of faith. No firme nada, nada en this. Yeah, nada. Nada, porque la ley los protege a usted. La ley indígena los protege a usted. ¿Qué hay ahí? Y eso hay que hacerla respetar. Berta and Nicolasa are making their own statement about the future. They're building a new house, their first in 70 years. The sisters are determined that they'll still be here next year, whether Chile rises above or succumbs to its past. <laughs> Ay, a mí no me va a igualar ningún ni hombre en este sentido. En un dos balazos yo no voy a morir tampoco. ¿Mm? Dos balazos no muero yo. En vez de morir un dos balazos, el otro que está tirando el bala es el que lo, lo muere, ese muere. Porque yo no, porque yo no estoy sola. Claro, ahora estoy sola, ¿no? Pero después no. El valentía que tiene una, una señora, Pehuenche, ¿eh? 